coroner says the other shot was the fatal shot that it hit Lieutenant Glenowitz in the torso. The veteran officer was supposed to retire in August, but he had been asked to stay on just one more month, and sadly, that was the month in which he was killed. Joining me now to discuss the CNN Justice Correspondent Pamela Brown and former police officer and FBI Special Agent Jonathan Gilliam. Uh, so, Pamela, if I could start with you, just walk me through what some of this uh, reporting has been from the medical examiner about how Lieutenant Glenowitz died. Well, we've been speaking with the medical examiner as well as law enforcement officials, Ashley, and what we're being told uh, from the medical examiner is that there was one devastating gunshot wound that hit Officer Glenowitz in the torso, but we're being told uh, from sources, law enforcement sources, that he was actually hit twice, as you point out. One of the bullets hit the bulletproof vest that Officer Glenowitz was wearing, and the other came at a downward angle. That was the devastating gunshot wound, we're told, that hit him in the torso, and I've been speaking to a uh, forensic analyst, um, Ashley, and we're being told that that would indicate the fact that the bullet could go underneath the bulletproof vest and kill Officer Glenowitz would indicate uh, that this was in very close proximity, that that close range, that the, the bullet wound, the gun wound came at close range, Ashley. So while we're sort of trying to, to figure out how this happened, there's still the issue of uh, whoever did it is still out there. And, and what are they doing with the Fox Lake group and also the feds who arrived and all the other supporting agencies uh, to, to find these people? Because there was this crazy manhunt, and now I hear very little. That's right. There was this 24-hour, two-mile radius grid search, and then all of a sudden, uh, things shifted very quickly. And what we're being told, actually, while Fox Lake police are saying, look, we're, we have our federal partners working around the clock, we're being told that some of the federal officials that were there in the beginning in the command post have actually pulled out. And it's really unclear what exactly is going on in terms of the manhunt, in terms of the search. Fox League police will only say that the surveillance videos they had didn't pan out. The three suspects, uh, the three people that could have matched the suspect's descriptions, it actually wasn't the suspect. So they basically said all we have to work with now is DNA taken from the scene, not matching Officer Glenowitz. That DNA is still being tested. Uh, and it's interesting, too, Ashley, the Fox League uh, Sheriff's Office sent out this scathing press release yesterday, basically publicly shaming the medical examiner, calling him unprofessional for releasing uh, sensitive information and saying that they have not been in touch at all with the medical examiner. And I have to say, I cover a lot of law enforcement stories, and, and it's really unusual to see something like that. Yeah, I mean, I'll just quote, Dr. Rudd's actions are completely outside of policy, procedure, protocols, and are completely unprofessional. Let me bring in Jonathan Gilliam on this. A couple of things I want to get from you. This, uh, this sort of remarkable, um, I guess, friction between the ME's office and, and the sheriff releasing this scathing letter that, by the way, goes a lot farther. And then this forensics issue where Officer Glenowitz uh, suffered a gunshot wound to his torso in a downward uh, trajectory but he was wearing a bulletproof vest. Look, I've worn a lot of black vests, sure. and they do stop mm -hmm. at a certain point. And the torso does include more than just the upper torso. There right. is a lower torso. So I'm just trying to get from you whether there is any sort of mystery or unusualness to the fact that he had a gunshot wound in the torso and was wearing a vest. Uh, let me just say first off, as far as this spat between the medical examiner and the law enforcement agency, is that it should be stopped. Um, you know, a lot of people when they come out of the military and they or the law enforcement, they go on TV, they get in these Twitter wars because they get on Twitter and people have opinions. That this is kind of similar to that. If the medical oh, examiner, this is not Twitter. This is a full no, release to the media. Yeah, it's I understand. Ugly, ugly. I stuff. understand, but they yeah. don't know how to work in the media. And the fact yeah. is, because these people are law enforcement and doctors, <coughs> the fact is, all this stuff should be held inside it's an ongoing investigation so you, you do believe that does compromise the investigation to hear these details i think that does and also it compromises the investigation when you have a breakdown in the entire system and i think that's shameful that uh, not only that the medical examiner released it but also that the police then went out and did their own release saying that yeah, he's not good it's one team now the logistics of the sure. actual forensics and how officer glenowitz died uh downward trajectory sure wearing a vest so you have to sort of picture if you will how this might actually so play out. I actually brought a vest here, and what you see is when you have a vest, yeah, when you have a vest on, there's a huge unprotected area right here. More often than not, when law enforcement officers are killed wearing a vest, it is either they have their arm up, which would indicate a struggle, um, or it, it comes in some type of an angle, but normally from the side, and the, the round can carry through in this way. And along